John chapter 21, verses 1 through 6. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tigris. And in, in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of, Gal of Galilee, of Canaan of Galilee, the son of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. And Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we are going with you also. And they went out and immediately got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. Oh boy. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. And yet the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? They answered him and said, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to draw in because of the multitude of the fish. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 I want to use as a subject today, everything is going to be all right. Amen. Let me say that again. Everything, everything. is going to be all right. Won't the church say it? Everything, everything. is going to be all right. Amen. Let's say it again like you mean it. Everything, everything is going to be all right. It's 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 going to be all right. Let me uh, do this disclaimer right off the bat. I, I snuck that title from one of those reggae songs that I was listening to in that restaurant. <laughs> Bob Marley says, every little thing is going to be all right. Yeah. And as I listened to Bob, I thought, you know, as Christians, we ought to believe that every little thing is going to be all right. And so often we get so caught up in our problems and in our situations and, and all of that, and we wonder, is everything going to be all right? But I stopped by today to say, it doesn't matter what your problem is. It doesn't matter how long you've had the problem. It doesn't matter how many times you had that problem. I want to let you know today that everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to, going to be all right because we serve a God who's able to make everything all right. Listen, let's look at this text real quick. I won't hold you long. In fact, for those of you wondering, I only have two points today. Uh -oh. And I hope my voice allow me to, to give you those two. But, 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 but when we look at this text, we find the disciples out in the boat fishing. And the text says they have been fishing all night long. And the bad thing about them fishing all night long, the text said they hadn't called nothing. And in fact, I just believe since they didn't catch nothing, you know, if anybody ever been fishing, I, I'm willing to bet they didn't even give a, didn't get a nibble. You know how when you're fishing and you've got a caulk on there and when you get a little nibble, the caulk will jump around. They probably was out there all night and didn't even get a nibble. And you know, if you've ever been fishing and I've never fished all night, but I've just fished for a few hours and didn't catch nothing. But the thing about fishing, your number one goal is to catch some fish. Amen. And when you don't catch fish, after fishing all day, and these brothers that fished all night, I just imagine that they were a little frustrated. And they probably was a little angry. And you know, they, they, they probably was wondering what in the world are we doing out here all night and we haven't caught nothing? That they probably wanted to throw the poles in the water. That they probably wanted to give up completely on fishing. But I want to tell you something. I know sometimes we have the same situation. We get a little bit frustrated. We get a little bit angry. We decide we want to quit. And sometimes we even want to throw in the towel. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Everything is going to be all right. And when I look at this text, I realize 
these brothers was frustrated and they were angry and they wanted to quit and they wanted to throw in the towel. But something happened in the midst of their frustration. And you know what it was? Jesus showed up. And when Jesus shows up, everything is going to be all right. All right. Yeah, I, I, know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Life sometimes is hard. I know that sometimes that you can't see the day for the night. And I know sometimes you wonder when is it ever going to end. But I stop by to tell you today is that when Jesus shows up, everything is going to be all right. And so as we look at this text, we discover a couple things. If you're really in the midst of a storm, if you're really in the midst of a problem, if you're really in the midst of suffering, and you don't know if you're going to make it, I want you to know that everything is going to be all right. And let's look at this text real quick, two points. <coughs> and I won't be long, I promise. Everything is going to be all right. And, 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 and the, the first thing you need to understand, everything's going to be all right. But the first thing you have to do is you got to recognize the presence of God. Look at verse 4. The Bible says in verse 4 that Jesus stood on the shore. But yet the disciples didn't know who he was. Now, that's, 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 that's interesting, right? Three years, the disciples had been with Jesus day in and day out. And here Jesus is standing at the shore they're looking out and there he stands and they don't even recognize who Jesus is and you know I thought about it they didn't recognize who Jesus was because they were too busy worrying about the problem of not catching fish H hear me now they've been fishing all night and they hadn't caught any fish so they had their mind on not catching fish, but what they missed was a creator of the fish. Let me say it again. They were looking at the problem, but the solution was standing on the shore. They missed the solution because they were looking at the problem. Here it is. Could it be? Your situation had changed? Could it be? Your, your problem is getting worse? Not because God can't make it all right. But, 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 but you're focusing on the problem and you're missing the problem solver. In other words, God can solve the problem. God can make a way out of no way. God can fix your situation, but because you're focusing so much on the problem, you're missing the solution that he's already worked out for you. Because you know what I believe? I believe we thinking when are things going to get better, when God has already made them better, we just don't see the better. In other words, when we take our eyes off of Jesus, the one who can fix our problems, the one who can make everything all right, then we lose sight of the solution. Listen, brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter how things look. I want you to know that God is there. It doesn't matter what it sounds like. I want you to know God is there. It doesn't matter even what it smells like, God is there. It doesn't matter what it feels like, God is there. And if God is there, everything is going to be all right. Stop focusing on the problem. 
we know that the presence of the Lord is there with you. I, I know. I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know it looks dark sometimes. But just know no matter how dark it gets, God is there. And I know that it sounds hopeless sometimes. But it doesn't matter what they're saying to you. God is there. And I know that your situation even smells right sometimes. But it really doesn't matter what it smells like because God is there. And, and, and I know that it feels like the pain is never going to end. But 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 let me let me assure you that God is there. It doesn't matter. Because God is always present with us. Listen, your breakthrough is right here in your hand because God is there. Your victory is guaranteed because God is there. Your, your, your deliverance is assured because God is there. We just got to remember that everything is going to be all right. We can't give up. We can't lose hope. We can't lose sight of the God who's able to do anything but fail. Listen to me. You must recognize that even in your most difficult moment, even in your most weakest moment, and in fact, if you really think about it, when you're weak, God is strong. And if you are weak and you don't know when you're go how you're going to make it, if you have the strength to make it to the next day or the next day, the next day, remember this. No matter how weak you are, no matter how dark the day, Jesus will always be the light at the end of the tunnel. So just remember this. When you called everybody on your roller decks, when you messaged everybody on your Facebook, when you tweeted everybody on your Twitter account, just know that when all of that is said and done, God is present with you. And if God is present with you, you don't have to worry about nothing. Because every little thing <laughs> is going to be all right. Let the church say everything, everything. is going to be all right. Now you got to say it like you believe it. Let the church say everything, everything. is going to be all right. Well, stop worrying then. Stop worrying then. Stop worrying then. Because you know that God is in the midst of your situation. Listen. The Bible teaches us something. I thought this was very interesting. The Bible teaches us that the Word of God says that in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy, and God's right hand will have pleasure forevermore. In other words, when we know that God is present with us, we ought not never lose our joy. Because in His presence, we have joy. And in His right hand, we always have pleasure. So listen to me. Everything is going to be all right, but you got to recognize that God is there present with you in the midst of your situation. So let me tell you something. Don't lose your confidence. Don't lose your hope. Don't lose your faith. Don't lose your trust. Don't lose your love because God is and always will be with you no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going to go through, no matter what you've been through, God, hallelujah, is always present. And now, my last point, let me get, let me get, let me get done here, is that everything is going to be all right, number one, because you got to recognize that God is with you. Number two, it's, everything is going to be all right because you got to learn that you got to obey, you got to obey the instructions of God. Okay, look, look at verse five, and six, eight. Let me let me lay it out real quick, and we'll be done. And so when you look at this verse, what you see here is that Jesus 
laid out some specific instructions to his disciples. See, Jesus shows up, he says, now, this is interesting. He said, now, because Jesus says, children, have you any food? I thought it was interesting because they were not at the grocery store. They were out there fishing. And so, and the disciple says, no, we don't have no food. But once Jesus asked the question and they gave him the answer, then Jesus laid out some specific instructions for them. He says, cast the net to the right side of the boat. And on the right side of the boat, you will find some fish. Now, I thought that was interesting. Because I wasn't sure, maybe they were fishing in the front of the boat. Maybe they must have been fishing in the back of the boat. I don't know. But when Jesus showed up, he said, cast the net to the right side of the boat. That was specific. He, he didn't say, wrap it around the boat. He said, cast the net to the right side of the boat. Very specific. And you know, brothers and sisters, could God be giving you some specific instructions and you're not bothering them? I, I, I don't know. C could he be giving you some specific instructions and you're just doing it your way? Are you doing like your friend told you? Are you doing it because your enemy doing it? Are you doing it, you know, just halfway, however you want to do it? Could God be giving you some specific instructions, but you're doing your own thing? Answer that question for yourself. Because maybe, just maybe, God is saying one thing and you're doing another. I don't know. He could be saying, go north, you're going south. He, he, he could be saying go east and you want to go west. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. He may be telling you to be quiet, but you can't shut your mouth. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. he, he may be telling you to be still, but you keep running around. Could God be giving you some specific instructions and you're missing it? And you're wondering why you're having all these problems? Maybe you're having these problems because you're not obeying the instructions of God. All right. Could God just be waiting on you to listen to him? Could he? Could, could God be waiting on you to do what he's telling you to do? Could, could, could God be waiting on you to say, okay, God, I will. Because listen, I just believe if we obey the specific instructions of God, everything will be all right. Amen. Listen, could God be saying, I'm calling, but you're not answering. I'm ordering, but you're not delivering. I'm commanding but you're not following, I'm instructing, but you're not learning, could God be saying, listen to my specific instruction? You know what, I think sometimes, brothers and sisters, I know I do this, so I'm confessing, that sometimes we pray, and we talk to God, and we ask God to do something, and when we say we're listening to him, but really, we pray and say, this is what I want to do with it. Oh, it sounds like what God said. I'm going to do it. But the problem with that is that we're missing some very important instruction. Have you ever, well, well I say what I do. You know, I'm not very good at putting things together, but, you know, I look at the picture and read a little bit of the instructions. But every time I do that, there's four or five screws left. <laughs> Stop shaking. And so I hadn't really followed the specific, because a picture don't tell you that a washer goes under here and, and a screw didn't go at the top, and so the stuff is falling apart. Well, maybe God has given us some specific instructions, and we're just looking at the picture. And if we're looking at the picture, there's some screws missing. And there's a 
nuts not there. And there's some washers that should be there to tighten things up. And so maybe, brothers and sisters, if we really want everything to be all right, we ought to do like the disciples did. When, when Jesus said specifically, put the net on the right side, maybe he's telling you to do something specific and you keep wanting to do it your way and you're wondering why this problem can keep on being in your life, why your situation will not change, why your circumstances are getting worse. God is saying, I'm giving you some instructions, but you're not listening to them. I I'm telling you what's right, but you want to do wrong. I I'm telling you where to go, but you want to go where you want to go. And if you want to go where you want to go, you got to deal with what you get when you get there. Amen. Oh, my God. God has some specific instructions that he gives to us. And we want our life to be right. We, we, we want everything to be holy, holy. But we want to do wrong, wrong. But, but Jesus says, I got some specific instructions for you. And if you follow those specific instructions, your life will quit falling apart. Your way will get a lot easier. Your blessings will become more and more. But you got to understand, if God gives you some specific instructions, he expects for you to follow them. Listen, brothers and sisters, I know all y'all are smart, y'all educated, you know, you got it going on, but let me tell you something, none of us are smarter than God, because if he lays out some instructions for you, you'd be best to do this, follow him by the letter, because if you leave out a screw, something's going to fall apart, if a washer's not tight, it's going to be a little shaky. And so here in this text, we learn that God wants us to follow his instructions. And you know, I was thinking about it. We want to be delivered. We want to be set free. We want to be healed. We want to be blessed. We want God's spirit to be upon us. But my question is, are we willing to follow God's specific instructions not a little bit here in my way there god's way here and my friend's way there no 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 he, he laid up because i just wonder when jesus told him to put it to the right side if they would have put it to the left side what would have happened because i'm wondering is god telling you to do something and you keep doing the opposite and you wonder why you get these results, let me tell you something. If he gives you some specific instructions, please follow them. And if you're confused, the Bible is your answer. The Bible has all, it's a road map to write. If you're confused and you're not sure, check the instruction manual. It's the word of God. It's the book. You don't have to wonder where it is. Man, you know what? They sell Bibles everywhere. In fact, they give them away. And so nobody should be without the instructions that they need to do the will of God. And so today, in this very short sermon, I want to say to you that everything is going to be all right. But it's going to be all right, though, because you got to recognize that God is present even in the midst of your storm, even in the midst of your situation, even in the midst of your pain, even in the midst of your struggle. God is there. And if you recognize he's there, if you keep your eyes on him, not on your problem, not on your struggle, not on your pain, not on your disappointment, not on your hurt, not on your anger, but if you keep your eyes on God, everything. Everything. It's going to be all right. And then finally, everything is going to be all right. But, but we got to understand and we got to be obedient to the specific instructions that God gives to us. You know, the thing about the Word of God is all true. So if you miss anything in it, 
If you do anything contrary to it, then you, you can't be doing all truth. And so if you're confused about what you need to do, grab that book and say, now, Lord, I'm not 100% sure, but, but now let me see. Oh, yeah, okay. That's a sin. No, I'm not doing that. Okay, uh-huh. Okay, that's good. I can do that. Nobody here. You know, they got Bibles on audio, video. There's no reason that we can't get the instructions that we need to do the things that God have, would have for us to do. And so, brothers and sisters, on this first part of this sermon, I want you to know this. It doesn't matter what your problems are. It don't matter what your struggles are. It doesn't matter what your situation is. I will tell you that everything is going to be all right. Don't worry. Turn it over to Jesus. When they looked up there after fishing all night, and they had called nothing, but the text said, when Jesus spoke, they had so many fish in the net that they couldn't even draw the net to the boat. Means to me is that what we can do with Jesus is what we are able to do. That's when we can do things better. Because what happened was, without Jesus, they caught nothing. With Jesus, they caught everything. So with Jesus, you can do nothing. But with Jesus, without, hey, with, without Jesus, you can do nothing. With Jesus, you can do everything. So let me tell you, brothers and sisters, everything is going to be all right. Recognize that God is with you. And recognize and understand that you got to obey the specific, the total word of God in your life. Amen. Oh